Hi, I'm Bill Hurden. This is a brief overview of what I did in order to get the GT40 crash sequences using Career 7. Career 8 should be released really soon and is expected to have greatly improved physics, making most of what I show here completely unnecessary. I'm using the 1967 Le Mans race car from Daz. The model has poser type rigging, so it's keyframable in Carrera, but if we try to use it in a physics animation, we get this, which is fun, but not much of a crash. To get the car to break into more parts, I imported the base object without the rigging and selecting one object per group. Because poser rigging uses object groups to define the bones, importing an object like this will create separate parts for each piece that was articulated in the poser version. Now when the simulations run, we get this. Carrera 7 and earlier versions had a strange physics behavior where many close together parts with force applied to them at the beginning of the simulation would tend to explode. I'll show you a possible workaround for these in a minute, but first, the crash would look better if it breaks apart into more pieces. This step can be done in Carrera's modeling room, but I have more experience modeling in Wings 3D, so I used it instead to speed things up. I cut the car in some places and welded in others, I removed some polygons that I didn't think would be noticed, and regrouped the model into logical chunks, like front passenger wheel, rear passenger wheel, windshield, front driver suspension, driver seat, passenger seat, etc. The end result yielded 37 parts. I exported from Wings 3D with create one group per material selected. So the front passenger wheel rubber is a separate group from the front passenger wheel aluminum and the like. I did this so if I decided I wanted more chunks to break apart even further, it would be easy to do without having to bring it in the modeler again and uh, reorganize the groups. Now when this model is imported in Carrera with one object per group selected, it creates 124 parts. So that should give a pretty spectacular explosion. But if you try to run this simulation like this, you'd probably see Carrera thinking for quite some time, maybe a couple hours, and then suddenly everything would explode because of that issue where too many parts are too close together. To greatly lower the amount of calculations needed, I made a proxy car. This is just some very low poly approximation models of the GT40. It's also modeled so that there are spaces between each of the parts to avoid the exploding bug. I wanted to make a lot more parts, but I didn't have a lot of time, and I was kind of anxious to see it crash. So I, I stuck with those 37. I selected the proxy parts one at a time, and it applied physical properties to each that approximated the characteristics of the real car parts they represent. For example, I set the engine to metal, doors to plastic, the windshield to ice. Of course, you can do custom settings that are a lot more accurate, but most of the presets were close enough. Now running a simulation is lightning fast, but because of the gaps between the parts, the proxy model falls apart under gravity. So let's turn off gravity and add something to crash into the proxy car. I created a sphere primitive, set its animation mode to physics, and gave it some initial speed like 100 feet per second, and set its physical properties to make it into a real massive steel ball. It's pretty cool, but not very real without gravity. So what I can do is I can add a directional force to simulate gravity, but so the car doesn't fall apart before the bearing hits it, I want to set its strength to zero at the beginning of the timeline and add a keyframe at the moment of impact and turn its strength to 1.7 feet per second. I used a discrete type of interpolation on the keyframe so that the transitions from off to on were instant rather than increasing gradually. You may ask, why 2.7 feet per second per second and not 32? I couldn't tell you. It's just that's about what works. Lowering this setting any further will make the car appear more massive, which is actually kind of cool. Higher numbers will make it look real small, like a toy, and the parts will bounce around real fast. I ran the simulation and made minor adjustments until I got a car crash that I liked. At that point, I saved my scene and imported the modified high-poly model. I parented each of the high poly groups to their corresponding proxy models. If you turn off collisions for each of the high poly parts, you can now run new simulations without having to take up any more processing power and only the proxies will be used for the calculations. I guess in addition, anything else that I did was I put a few particle emitters on the windows so that they would explode out some shards of glass. 
I also experimented with using some wave deform modifiers on some of the slow motion crashes to give the illusion of shock waves rippling across the body parts and impact. They worked okay. I think it probably if I spent more time on them, it would have turned out a lot better. So this is how I did the GT40 versus ball bearing video. It was a lot of fun. I did it real fast. There were a lot of things I would have liked to do better, but with Career 8 coming out pretty soon, I think that uh, there's a lot more potential there, and it'll be a lot easier, and we'll get some more spectacular effects.